This will start in uh, John chapter 3.
All right, so that's going to take us to Exodus chapter 10. And in Exodus chapter 10, I've never, never in my life seen this before. And I don't know if it'll maybe even help you or not, but Lord, it sure helped me. Exodus chapter 10, go to verse 20. Exodus chapter 10, verse 1. This is back to Moses trying to rescue the people of God out of the land of Egypt. Exodus chapter 10. We're going to start in verse 20. And we know that when he went in, that Pharaoh, his heart was hard. And he didn't let the people of God go. And I want you to focus really hard. As I, as I read you these verses, I want to ask you three questions, if I, the best I can remember. I want to ask you, who was it? Who was it who had a chance to do good and eat in this story? Who was it that ended up, you all know, he, we know that Pharaoh didn't do good. Who was it that done evil? Then I want to ask you as well, who did it affect? Amen. All right, so verse 20 says, But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. And we know that there was all kinds of plagues, right? We, we know a lot of those. I, I don't have them written down. Um, but you can go back and you can see uh, lice, flies, uh, plague on the cattle, plague of bulls, plague of hell, plague of locusts. And I probably missed a few, but you all know those stories. We know those stories. But listen to this one in verse 21. And the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt. Well, listen to this. I had never seen this before. Even darkness, which may be felt. Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was thick darkness in the land of Egypt for three days. They saw not one another, neither rose in from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light. Who was it that chose to do evil? It was Pharaoh. You see, God gave Pharaoh a chance. He could have let the people go. Uh, I don't know how, you know, you can get into predestination and you can talk really deep on this subject, but if you, if you break it down to the most simplest terms, Pharaoh could have let God's people go. The will of God was at the end for the people to leave bondage, right? Yeah. We know that because they ended up doing it. We know that the Lord ended up destroying the armies of Pharaoh. We know that all these plagues are written down to show the power of God. But I was thinking about Pharaoh, and I was thinking about this darkness. Remember, light is good, darkness is evil. And I was thinking about how many times in the Bible one man can cause trouble for a whole lot of people. And I thought today as the Lord began to deal with my heart, I felt like I felt like warning our people that we make sure that we don't go against the will of God. Because we have the chance to hurt our family. We have the chance to hurt our church. We have the chance to hurt everybody that surrounds us by going against the will of God. Yeah. I thought as I read this, I started thinking, Lord, but it was just one man. But all of Pharaoh's people had to live three days in darkness. It wasn't just a little bit of darkness. You know, it wasn't just a cloudy day, but it was darkness. The Bible says that it could be fake. They could feel it. 
going to go now to the New Testament, Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. telling you that in chapter 26 Paul we know Paul Saul who was on the road to Damascus saw a great light fell down he was blind for three days and the light he heard Saul Saul I persecuted thou me it's hard for thee to keep against the freaks he said who is it Lord the Lord told him it, it was it was Jesus he ended up going and living he started that day a, a dramatic change in his life we know this stuff but he started then to serve the Lord. Many times it caused him troubles. Uh, when, when you change your lifestyle, a lot of times it will cause troubles. Uh, so Paul, in verse 26, is cast into prison at Caesarea. And the Bible said it's because he was a mover. This was their argument. When they wanted Paul arrested, they said he's a mover of sedition among the Jews. And this was my favorite part. A ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. That was their complaint against Paul. I thought, man, wouldn't it be awesome if people said that about us? A ringleader. The Nazarenes, that was basically what they called Christians. Yeah. Imagine if they said that, that guy, man, that woman, she's a ringleader in the world of Christians. Wouldn't that be good? So Paul was cast into prison for just that. And I, there was a guy I came that came in in chapter 26 named Agrippa. Doug Grills preached this one time, and I don't, I don't know that I'll ever forget it. But Agrippa wanted to hear Paul's defense. I guess they had crossed paths at some time. When, when you read that chapter, it seems like maybe Agrippa knew Paul. And, so, and it sounds like Paul knew him because uh, he calls him an expert in, in the Word and different things. And I, I thought... Uh, at the end of that, we know that Agrippa says, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And he goes on to say, This man might have been set at liberty. He might have been let go and set free if he hadn't appealed to Caesar. We know that Caesar is in Rome. And so in chapter 27, that's where we pick up uh, the journey by ship to Rome, Italy. And I'm going to just sum up verse 2 through 5. They go from Asia to Sidon to Cyprus to Cilicia, Pamphylia, Myra, and Lycia. Then in verse 6, they swap ships. 
I'm just summing this up because it's a lot of a lot of reading, a lot of big words. But verse six, they swap ships. Now, and keep in mind, what did Paul do wrong? What did Paul done wrong here? He was a ringleader of the Nazarenes. Amen. Verse seven and eight, Canaanites, Crete, Salmon, Pharaoh, and Lycia. Verse nine and ten. Uh, Paul stands uh, and begins to warn them about damage that is coming. All right, so I want to start reading in verse 12. And because the haven was not commodious to enter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenix. And there to winter, which is a haven of Crete, lies toward the southwest and the northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, losing thence, they sailed close by Crete. I started thinking when Trav was preaching, do y'all remember Sunday when he was preaching and he was talking about the storm? Mm -hmm. And he said that a lot of times that first sail, that first bid will come by and then there will be calm in the middle. And a lot of times we relax and we think, Lord, thank you for helping me make it through that. And we kick back and we take it easy. But then just right around the corner, there's another part of the storm coming. And a lot of those, he said that when he preached, he said a lot of the trees that the ground had softened up around the trees and and the, the damage would be greater because the, the ground and the trees, the, everything was weakened by the first round. So when the second round came through, a lot of damage happens. And that's exactly, I, I, had, to, I had this thought before Trev preached that way. And when he preached it, I, I just, uh, it scares me even worse. Because that's twice that you all are going to hear the same thing. And uh, I know that it seemed like, you know, when we got to have two good services, we've had several since, you know, since we got to come back. But I remember, I remember when we first got to come back, how happy it seemed like everybody was to be here, wasn't it? Everybody was just so happy. It wouldn't have mattered if anything happened in that service. I don't think we would have cared if there was a piano player or, or any musicians. We were just so happy to get to come back and worship the Lord and the Lord come by. And then it seems like, I'm afraid since then, that maybe the eye of the storm comes. Maybe we thought this is over, you know. Finally, we made it through the storm. But the second round has come through and it's changed a lot of people's lives. And it says, verse uh, 13, And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose. Their purpose was to weather the storm. So when the wind blew from the opposite direction, they thought that it was safe to come out from their hiding spot. And it said, they sailed close by Crete, but not long after, there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurypheline. The second round was worse. It even had a name, that being Eurypiden. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. They couldn't do anything. They couldn't steer it. The wind was too bad. So they just let the ship go. They let the wind do whatever it was that it was going to do. And running under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship, fearing lest they should fall into quicksand, struck sail, and so were driven. And being exceedingly tossed with the tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. And then think about the sun 
and the stars going away, what would you have? Would you have light or would you have darkness? You would have darkness. What did Paul do to deserve this? You know, a lot of times as Christians we think, you know, we're doing good and we think maybe that we shouldn't have to face hard things. You know, we think that maybe because we're doing good that maybe we should be able to just coast through, you know? But a lot of times it don't work out that way. What did Paul do? He was a ringleader of the Christians. Cast in prison for preaching the word. And the reason he was actually on this ship is so that he could go spread the gospel to another person in Rome. But I started thinking, I was praying, I was praying for our families in here. And I felt like that there was some of you who was in darkness that you could feel. Darkness that just, it hurts. Darkness that's hard to overcome. Darkness that seems like no matter how hard you try, you fall right back into the same rut. Darkness that it seems like you're the only one who cares, maybe, or the only one who's fighting. The only one who's trying to do the right thing, or maybe the only one who's trying to serve the Lord. I don't know, but I thought I had that I felt like I was praying for people when I thought, surely, surely darkness has come to their house. And uh, I want to give you a little bit of encouragement tonight, but I thought uh, no sun and no stars. It says all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. And that is exactly that's exactly where the devil wants his wants the, the Lord's people. He wants us to feel like that there is no hope. There's no way you'll ever come out of this when there's no way Bledsoe can be back to what we were. There's no way we'll have a service like we had maybe a few months ago. There's no way that your husband or your wife's ever going to act right. They're not going to be back to the place where you want them to be. They'll never get to where you thought that the Lord would have them by now. Or maybe it's your children. I, I don't know. I know we got uh, all kinds of people in here. Some of you have lost kids. Some of you have uh, spouses that are that are not maybe here. A lot of you have maybe uh, just different, different trials. The devil wants you to lose hope. And that's what happened here on the ship. Imagine being Paul. He was the only one who cared. The rest of them were a bunch of sinners, the best I can tell. But Paul, Paul wanted, he wanted to make it. And uh, I thought it said, but after a long absence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and he said, Sirs, you should have listened. You should have hearkened to me. And not have loose from Crete. And to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you, be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sir, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as he told me. Amen. I, I want to tell our people, amen, there's, there's two kinds of people in here right now. There's people who are in the light, and you feel the light, or you're in darkness. And that darkness could be because you are disobedient. It could be because you've walked away from the will of God. Just like in Pharaoh's situation. It could be that. 
And I thought, you know, that Trav's preached this way, Doug's preached this way before, and I'd see it and I'd think, I would thank Lord surely. You know, I hope he ain't talking about me. You know, I hope, I wonder, Lord, is he talking about me? Is it, am I about to do something wrong? That's a good attitude to have. It's a good attitude. It's a good way of checking ourselves. But whoever I'm talking to tonight, you already know that it is. I'm not, I'm not preaching to somebody who don't know. You know if you've caused the darkness or not. <coughs> and I, I with love, I just come to warn you tonight to get back to the light. Get back to the light. Those of you who might be here and you're in darkness, that person who walks away from the Lord, have y'all noticed that a lot of our people have done that? A lot of our people has walked away. Who are we to think that we're not next? If you would have told them six months ago, in six months you won't be there. In six months you won't even believe the way you do now. You won't even live the way that you live right now. I'm sure that they would have said, Oh, Blake, you're wrong. I'm sure. I ain't went back and looked, but I'm sure that one of us has preached a warning to these people. But somehow, the devil has a way of taking our hope. He has a way of putting us in darkness to where that we lose sight of what it is we're fighting for. And next thing you know, it starts out with just a little bit of darkness. He just creeps it in. He don't turn the lights out all at once, but it just slowly happens. One little piece of darkness at a time. Next thing you know, the lights are out. And the whole family's gone. And I'm afraid that we're about to lose more. But I want to, I want to preach good news tonight. I, I did come to warn you. Somebody knows that you're walking in darkness. I don't know who you are. I don't know if mom and dad knows who you are. But somebody's in darkness because you chose her. And you choose over and over again to walk in that darkness. And if you don't turn from the darkness, you may endanger your whole family. It's not easy to pack the load of your whole family. It's not easy for one spouse to do all the work to try to serve the Lord. Amen. And it takes working together. Somebody is about to cause their whole family to be in darkness. But somebody else tonight is in darkness for doing good. You tried to live for the Lord and you found yourself sun and stars have went away for many days and it seems like that all hope has gone. Paul said, I exhort you, I encourage you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship for there stood by me this night the angel of God whose I am and whom I serve saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Listen to verse 25. I thought tonight, I know it's, a, a, it's, it's a pretty simple message tonight, but I thought how that you have a choice to make as we all do every day. But I'd like to put a little more emphasis on tonight's choice. I'd like to tell you that if you are choosing darkness, if you'll choose light, Trav one time preached the whole message about how that when we mess things up, God can turn them around later on and make them a good thing in our life. Do you remember preaching that, Trav? 
I remember, I, at first I was like, where are you going, Trev? I don't know about all this. By the time he got down, I said, man, ain't it wonderful that our God is big enough that he can fix our mistakes and, and bring good out of them sometimes. I think about David. I mean, imagine David. We got to spend time with Ben the other night. One of the, one of the promises that God gave them that they would recover all. And, and even then some, I believe, maybe. <laughs> God fixed it. And He can fix it. Whatever it is tonight. I've come many times to this very place and I hoped that the Lord would fix it for me. And He can. If you're willing. If you're willing. If you ain't willing, you'll leave here tonight and it'll continue to get worse. And darkness will continue to overtake your life. But now back to the good part, the, the, the good stuff. Verse 25, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told to me. I believe. I believe it can be as good as it once was. I believe that we can get to the place that we're happy. Again, amen. If you're in darkness tonight, amen, I want to tell you that if you'll turn to God, or if you'll keep running for Him, amen. then you can have happiness again. You can find the joy that you want to have. Amen. Amen. I'd like to ask everybody to stand with me. Seems like a good time to close. <clears throat> Book of Psalm, chapter 30. Verse 5. The Bible said, for his anger endureth, but for a moment. Yes. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. <clears throat> if you're in darkness tonight, I just want to tell you to keep pushing. Keep fighting. If you're, if you're in darkness for good reasons tonight, I believe. I've been excited all day. Just hoping that somebody tonight can find the joy again in serving the Lord. Amen. I, I hope tonight that if you're doing good, I hope and I pray that you keep doing good. Because just on the other side, amen, what's going to happen tomorrow oh, about 7 o'clock in the morning? The sun's going to come up again. Oh, not because of me, not because anybody else is good or great, but because of God is in control. And until the final day and the, the final time that the sun comes up, it'll come up every time without fail. And it'll go down again and it'll come up again because God is good. If you're here tonight and you are choosing darkness, Don't be surprised when bad things come. Yeah. Don't be surprised when your family's in trouble. And you're looking up saying, Lord, how did I get here? I hope tonight that you remember. Just like Pharaoh, three days in darkness that they could feel. They could feel it. Have you ever felt darkness? You ever felt the presence of the enemy? I have. It is not a good feeling. But I'm here tonight to tell you, if you'll turn to the light, if you'll turn to the light, the Lord can fix it. If you're running for the Lord, and it seems like all hope's gone, for whatever your cause might be, I know, I know that we all have so many things in front of the Lord, I hate to sit and try to name all of them. If you feel like hope's gone and you feel like darkness is around you, just keep running. Keep running for Him. And eventually, eventually we'll make it through this storm. Eventually we'll, we'll be able to find the joy again. And we'll see. I love everybody. I, I'd like to ask you all to pray. However you feel like. If you feel like coming to the altar, you'd be more than welcome to come. <coughs> if you feel like laying feel late to do something tonight like no preached 
You do it. Don't let the devil talk us out of it. I love everybody tonight so much. When I was praying, I just, I, I felt it. You know, sometimes you, you pray and it's just words. And you pray out of necessity and you, you know that you need to pray and so you get down and you pray and sometimes the Lord comes by, sometimes He don't. Sometimes as a preacher, maybe He'll give me a message in a, in a prayer. Sometimes He'll give me a thought, maybe I need to message somebody, maybe I need to reach out to somebody. When I was praying this time, I could feel the darkness for a family. And I just come to tell you tonight that you could have light again. If you choose life, if you choose life, you can have it. But you have to choose it. Hello, thanks for listening.